Nadia Rollins, and thank you so much for joining um, us at Front Office Sports. We're excited to talk to you about the Chicago Sky and all the new things you have going on. Um, first of all, the Sky and the whole WNBA are in a weird part of the season right now. You're coming off of a huge All-Star weekend where you know you had you had players down in Phoenix, you know, making All-Star history. Um, and now having this break, you know, how has how has your summer break been so far? Your, your <laughs> Olympic break? Not very um, relaxing, that's for sure. Um, so I was in All Star in Phoenix for All Star Weekend, which was fantastic, supporting Angel Reese in her first All Star run. It was great to see her and Caitlin Clark as the first double rookies to uh, be on the All Star team in ten years. So that's pretty amazing. Um, and clearly, it was uh, I think from a just a, a moment in sports and women sports, it was a pretty incredible uh, entertainment experience. The product on the court was fantastic. The game was exciting. The atmosphere was electric while you were there. All the sponsors, all the lights, camera action you would expect at um, a game of that stature uh, definitely uh, presented itself. So it was a really amazing weekend. So that was just all-star weekend. Then fast forward, we run into this week and announcing our new practice facility, which was also a a dream of ours then that it was really wonderful to have the opportunity for that to come to fruition so you know no rest for the weary and uh headed to the olympics uh in the next week or so so oh my god wow yeah exciting summer for you for sure the all-star game was so incredible for so many reasons i mean we saw the viewership numbers and especially just mm -hmm. having the team olympics versus team wmba like going head to head it was so much more exciting than so many all-star games usually are because it was such a competition and to see WNBA right. come out on top it was it was a really incredible game yeah yeah, really was was. Cool. yeah well I mean you mentioned the practice facility it's huge news um for any of our listeners who aren't aware this guy earlier this week reports came out that they might be moving to a practice facility much closer um to the city um at, at a spot near the airport and then um yesterday the news came out that it would be uh, at that site, but next to it. So not just taking over the site, but the sky are going to build their own facility Net right new. next door. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brand new. Um, and it's going to be, I think it was 38 million, 38 practice million. facility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really exciting news. Tell me, Nadia, why is this the right time for the team to make this move? Well, this was something that we'd been thinking about for a while, like contrary to all the uh, comments and I try not to read comments on social media, but uh, any of the, uh, those that have hot takes about our, our journey, um, this was not something that was just thought of. It wasn't something that just because I toured a facility that, no, oh, now it's time for us to get ours. If anyone who is in business or understands commercial real estate and how these things work, there's long lead times. Um, and also we've been making this a priority for the last 18 months, at least, if not longer. Um, but this was the moment where all the stars came into alignment from the location to the right partnership with uh, someone who has a similar values to ours um, and uh, the right uh, build out that we were looking for with the financials that could make this sustainable over time. Again, this is not something we're just doing for the moment. We're looking to have a sustainable enterprise uh, that's run really well, that provides the best um, support and investment in our athletes and uh, players. And we do, we have that. So this was the moment for us. Yeah, awesome. And I'm really curious, this is in partnership with the Village of Bedford Park mm -hmm. where it's gonna be located. The Village of Bedford Park, I've grown up going to Chicago Bulls games and White Sox games and seeing them marketing all over the place. I didn't realize until looking but into it this that it's, exactly. it's only a couple hundred people. Like, I think it was that's, like 600 people or something. Exactly. What has it been like working with them? And, They're amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's the perfect <laughs> partnership for us because, you know, the mayor, we have uh, the city clerk, we have the chief of police, we have the you know, chief of the fire department, everyone is supporting of this. And uh, we know everyone that is anyone to know in Bedford Park from a municipality perspective. Um, we've broken bread literally together, uh, pot belly sandwiches around a table um, to figure out how we can get this deal done. Um, you know, blueprints and, you know, the big screens, you know, doing all the renderings, meeting with all the architects. We're all there in partnership together. So they're the best partners that we could have in this endeavor. And we're really proud to uh, stand alongside them in this public-private partnership. That's so interesting. Yeah, I love the pot belly note. That's so Chicago. It's true. I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're seeing this as a growing trend. You mentioned, you know, in Phoenix, they just opened theirs. The Storm mm -hmm. earlier this year and then mm -hmm. Las Vegas last year. I mean, the league has been around for decades. Why do you think we're seeing right now just in the last year? And the Liberty are opening theirs soon. You know, they're committed to that. Why do you think we're seeing this trend? all of a sudden of teams being like, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We're going to build our own. We're going to do our own thing. And I think it's the it. flywheel effect, right? So a lot of things have to be true for this moment to have existed and for this inflection point to occur. 
Um, they had some component parts, but they all need to be working in concert with one another. So not only do we have, have always had great product on the court, we now have great talent in the pipeline that's coming up in the college ranks. We had an amazing, we've always had great draft classes, but I think this was a particularly noteworthy one. Um, we have really great competitiveness among teams, so that's really exciting. So you don't know or can predict the outcomes of games, which is really exciting for live events and live TV, one of the few remaining properties that are out there that can drive that level of engagement. And speaking of engagement, we have new, net new fans that are coming to the sport in droves, driven through a lot of the NCAA sort of competition. And then, of course, with the W, all of this is happening at the same time. And then finally, you have um, two things I think are important. One, you have investment, people like me coming in um, with a level of uh, sophistication around how do we think about making this a business, not a cause, and making this sustainable over time and running a really great enterprise. Um, and you have people who are really investing real dollars in this in ways that are more than a hobby. Um, and I think that's important in, in concert with everything else. And then finally, you have sort of a little bit of the rivalry going on. People want to see a great story. They want to root for their players and uh, understand like how they're aligned with the people that they care about. And, and we have a little bit of drama too. So all that makes for you know great uh, destination engagement and viewership on TV and sort of uh, games to watch. Um, so I think all of that comes to this place where if we're going to invest and build our own sort of sustainable um, um, assets that we're adding to our franchise, and this is a huge capital commitment, huge time commitment, um, you know, leveling up in a way that has never been done before. And I think there just wasn't a, um, a thought that this was um, that a franchise could carry this. And, and we're now at a place where we can because all of those things are working together at this moment in time. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about your facility, of course. All, you know, two courts, all the amenities, private mm -hmm. kitchen, things like that. But mm -hmm. something that really stuck out to me was the content studios and the beauty uh, areas. Yep. Yeah, the mm -hmm. stations. What went into that decision? And, and kind of is that part of the sky saying, you know, this is our brand now is building, you know, building our esteem. Well, we see the, the whole player, well. right? It's not just, yeah. you know, yeah. the, you know, the basketball player in the four lines on the court. You know, they have full lives. Um, you can see, I'm just, you know, I don't know if you follow any of our players, but, you know, on social media, Angel Reese is in London or Paris. I don't even know which city she's in now, um, you know, and, and after, you know, just leaving Phoenix from um, the All-Star game. And, you know, and, and we embrace that. We embrace our players being their best selves in whatever way they want to express that. Um, everybody delivers what's required for their day job, and they also can have, you know, an expressive life outside of uh, the sky and we want to create the facilities and support to show them that we see them and that this is something that's great also and we're women and these are things we like we are deep into content creation we're in live in a digital media age we cannot ignore that we do that at the sky part of our marketing our, our social team is elite i think and you know we love sort of our team and what they've done in the content they've created so this is not only just for our front office but for the players themselves and then from a beauty perspective, this has been something that's been trending um, for the last year and a half that they've uh, sort of pierced the fashion zeitgeist and people are looking at, you know, their tunnel fits and what's the drip and how are we looking um, for, you know, um, on, you know, what the players are wearing to games, et cetera, and, and around the cities and in their personal lives. Like this is this is the moment. So we're here for all of that. We want to support that. Yeah. And do you see part of that as sort of how the, the Bulls and the White Sox have become these global brands that transcend, you know, sport even? Do you see that as, as an avenue that the sky could go down with Absolutely. all the content creation for its players? You and know, not just it could presence. be anything, right? So I think, yeah. you know, they, they people like to say sky's the limit, you know, with Chicago sky's a play on words. And I think we're limitless. Um, and this is just one example of that. Yeah, really cool. And, and I saw also, um, it was reported that you know, the target neighborhood that the players could go live in, it would be the South Loop. Can you talk a little bit about what might be possible in that kind of outside of basketball um, sphere for these players once they're living downtown or, or somewhere closer uh, to the city, what might be possible in partnerships and things like that? Yeah, so uh, the South Loop, just because it's that's where our arena is uh, with Wind Trust, where we play our games, it's 11 miles from our practice facility. I've timed it both in traffic and out, it's not traffic, it's anywhere from 14 minutes to 22 minutes. So, it, you know, it's it's great. Uh, just the South Loop is a great look. I used to live in the South Loop and two or three different places is a great neighborhood, walkable, great restaurants, a whole cultural vibe, which is cool. And you're right there next to the lake. Um, but, you know, it just depends on where players can, you know, they want to live on um, various places. That's where we're targeting. But downtown is 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 where we want our players to be. So once this um, 
practice facility comes online and we're able to um, move everything down uh, towards uh, Bedford Park and sort of house our players downtown. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. And I just say South Loop because that's just where it's the easiest and they have mm -hmm. lots of housing inventory and it's a great place to live. Um, but, you know, I, I can just imagine now I have, you know, different, you know, condominiums and apartments coming to, you know, ping my inbox. Like, you should have your players live here. So, you know, it could be South Loop. It could be West Loop. It could be, you know, anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to limit us, but that that's what seems like it makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the South Loop is a great and growing neighborhood. I feel like yes. there's always a new condominium going up there it's true. all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yes. All the time. Yeah. So you have a lot of options there, but I mean, there's so many great places down right. close to Winchester that the players could live. I think it'll be really cool to see, you know, to see them and what they're able to do. Like we said, with all this content, with all like documenting their lives off the court, being downtown, what that might look like for the team. Mm -hmm. That's going to be really cool, I think. Um, I want to ask as well, I spoke to a couple of fans last week who talked about how their prices for, for season tickets went up. It's going to happen around the league, and it already has started happening around the league. It's just what happens when, mm -hmm. you know, leagues get more exposure. Was there any connection to this practice facility? Because some of them had said maybe it's going toward a new practice facility. They are kind of speculating. Is that connected at all, or those are separate things? It's totally separate things. I mean, if you imagine these are for net new prices for coming up in the future seasons, and we have to pay for the facility, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, before next season. So... No, they're two separate things. And we were very, yeah. very careful about our pricing. I know there was a little bit of consternation. And quite honestly, I would say we could have done a little bit better about communicating that up front, honestly. Um, so there wasn't such a shock and awe. But also, this is a signal that things are growing and you want to invest in the team. You have to pay more for things that are worth more. And like, I mean, that's what it is. And yes, the ticket prices, I made a strategic decision that we were going to price our courtside feet on wood seats a lot higher than those that were in our mid-tier sort of VIP seats that were a lot less um, of a, a jump for those that were in our upper bowls because those that are getting premium seats should take bear more of the expense on the increase that, you know, so we can still remain accessible to those that are in the mid-tier and the lower tiers, right? So um, all that was very thoughtful. We did not, this was not a mistake. This was not something that we just sort of like, huh, let's see what happens and what's people's willingness to pay. We ran all the models, we looked at it, we were very careful around looking at sort of different tranches of how long certain season ticket holders have been with us, should we be rewarding those who've been with us when nobody was coming to the games? I mean, all of this uh, conversation um, occurred. Um, so again, I don't want people to think this was a, uh, a reckless decision. It was one to take advantage of the market and the value creation we have put together It will that will increase the fan experience. We can invest more in the experience in the day of the games. Um, we'll have uh, we have better, you know, entertainment for halftime shows. Um, I mean, everything. It's like rising tide raises all ships. So all this is good is going back to investing in the franchise and the product demands it. And we should be able to uh, uh, charge what the market will bear. That's a really great answer, really peeling back the layers of the behind the scenes of what's going mm -hmm. on in a decision like that. Thank you. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about kind of the future and what's going on in the next couple of years. Let's bring it back to just the rest of the season after the Olympic break. What are you looking forward to? What do you, you know, what's still to work the on? Playoffs. That's what we're looking forward to. I'm calling it right now. So <laughs> I, I may be, you know, people may say I'm a little over my skis, but I, I have faith in us. And Spoon is an amazing coach. And I think our players are just starting to gel. Um, we're a new team, as you know, you've seen. Um, and I think given for us being literally a team that's been sort of being reconstituted, we've done, you know, pretty well. So I, I'm excited about the future and what this second half of the season will bring. Awesome. Nadia, thank you so much for speaking with me and for all your thoughts. This was just wonderful and hearing more. And you sure have a lot on your plate. It's It'll be exciting to watch it in the next couple of years all unfold. Well, and thank you for covering us. And uh, let's go Sky. <laughs>